Okay, so welcome back. So this is where we had stopped before the break. We were discussing the idea of uh, causal language modeling, where the goal is to dis predict a uh, distribution over the vocabulary. And we were toying with this idea of can transformers be used as a function for predicting this distribution over the vocabulary, right? And then we said that there could be three possibilities that we'll consider. One is using only the encoder part of the transformer. So this is the uh, transformer model which we had studied in the context of machine translation which had encoder as well as decoder. But now we are toying with the idea of maybe we can just use the encoder or just use the decoder or use both the encoder and decoder to estimate these probabilities, right? And this picture will sort of, uh, as I had mentioned in the last class, guide the rest of the discussion in this uh, course. And the first thing that we will do is look at what are known as decoder only models. And when I say what are known as, I mean informally known as decoder only models. So let's see what that is. Uh, so this is what the decoder of our vanilla transformer model, which was used for translation. It had an encoder to encode the English sentence and then it had a decoder to decode the Hindi translation. So this is the decoder part of it. If you remember, it had the self-attention, cross-attention and feed-forward network, right? So I've just taken that diagram as it is. And now let's see if we have to make any changes to make it work for uh, the task at hand, right? And what is the task at hand? So we'll have an input, which is a sequence of words. And given a sequence of words, we want to predict the next word. That's the basic task of language modeling, the way we saw it, that you are given k words and you want to predict the k plus one word. And this k could start from zero, right? So you're not given anything, you're just given the go symbol. You want to predict the first word. When you're given the first word, you want to predict the second word and this can iteratively continue, right? So the input is going to be such a sequence of words. Uh, and of course, we want the model to see only the present and past inputs. So if I have given it the during training, I of course have everything with me, I have the entire document, the entire paragraph with me. And now suppose I want to predict the fifth word, it does not make sense for me to tell it what comes after, because what comes after is a task for the model to generate. It has to first predict the fifth word, then take the five words and generate the sixth word. If I already tell it what comes after, then this task of predicting the fifth word becomes easier. And in the real world, when the model is used, it will not have access to that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth word, right? Because I would expect a user to give a prompt, complete the following sentence, uh, I am going to, and then he just stops, right? So he does not give you the rest of the context. At training time, you have the liberty of knowing the entire context, entire paragraph, but you have to work around that. You cannot exploit that liberty. You have to let go of that information, right? So we can only look at present and past inputs and not the future inputs. And we already know how to deal with this, right? We can achieve this by applying the mask. So when we are computing the attention over the remaining uh, elements, we just do everything as normal business. But the end, when we are trying to uh, calculate the attention weights, when we have calculated the attention weights, we just apply a mask and zero out the weights for all the future words, right? So that's good as saying that when I'm going to take a summation i equal to 1 to t, where t is the sequence length. This is the entire paragraph or document given to me. And say alpha j i into v i, right? So this is the vector of the ith word. And this is how I am going to compute a new representation for the jth word, right? So let me call this as h j, right? And this contains all the t words in the equation. I don't want all the t words. I only want words up to the first k words, which I am allowed to see. So for all the remaining i's, I'll just make the alphas zero, right? And how to do this mathematically is something that we have seen in the transformer lecture, where we have this mask matrix, which we add, and it contains some minus infinities, which make sure that the weights become zero, right? So that concept, so this sum, instead of summing over t elements, we effectively sum only over the first k elements by making the alphas to be zero for all the other elements. So that's what the concept of masking is. Okay, so moving on. Yeah, this is the mask matrix that we had seen. So the masked multi-head self-attention layer is required because you're going to attend to previous tokens in the decoder itself, right? But do you need the cross-attention? Is there a concept of cross-attention here? We are not using the encoder. This is a decoder only model. The cross attention is between the encoder and the decoder. We are just using the encoder model. So it's not that a sequence has been fed to the encoder 
some representations have been computed, uh, now the decoder is going to look at that sequence. We are not dealing with that case, right. So, we will just have uh, the vast self attention and we won't have any cross attention because there is no encoder. This is a decoder only model, right. And we will get used to this idea because so far we have always looked at transformers in the encoder decoder paradigm. Now, what does a decoder only model mean? So, we are building that intuition. So, this is what the decoder only model would look like. It would have a sequence which is getting constructed on the fly and uh, at say during training, let us see, let us go a bit ahead and then this will become clear, right. So, the what is the output here? The at the first instance, I want to predict a distribution over the vocabulary which will tell me what is the probability of uh, any of the V words in the vocabulary being the first word, right. So, it tells me the probability of uh, any of the, uh, the first word taking on any of the V values that is there in the vocabulary, right. So, that is P of x1. Now, once I have that, I will do this auto regressive generation. That means, I will feed the output of the model back to the input and then when I want to predict the fourth word, I look at the first three words. And what I am effectively predicting is probability of x4 given x3, x2, x1, right? And that is exactly what the chain rule uh, says, right? So, this is what we are trying to predict. Each of this, each of this is a distribution over the vocabulary, right? It is just that these are all conditional distributions, and the first one is just a marginal distribution right? because it is not conditioned on anything, it is just the first word, right? So, uh, yeah, so this is uh, what the full picture looks like at every stage you are essentially predicting a distribution over the vocabulary and the probabilities are getting determined by the parameters of the model. What do I mean by that? That suppose magically all the parameters in the transformer, right, which are our WQ, WV, WK, the parameters in the feed forward network, all of these parameters have been magically given to me and I collectively call them as theta, right. Now, when I give an input, so this input, suppose I give the first three words, which is go, I, am, right. So, these are the, this is the input given to the model, which is go, I, am. And of course, these embeddings have also been trained. They are also a part of the theta, because the word embeddings are also a part of that. So, I pass this input, which is a d-dimensional embedding, and I pass it through the uh, transformer block and do all the computations that are required, right. I have the w's, I have w, q, uh, k and v, right. I have these word embeddings. I have everything that I need to make the full computation and come out at the output, which will just be a soft max at my, on the top of my final output from the model, right. Does that make sense? Yes. And that soft max is actually giving me this probability distribution. So, what it means is that that probability distribution is being computed by the transformer using the parameters of the transformer, right. Once you have the parameters of the transformer, you give it any input, it will give you an output and in this case, the output is from a softmax function. So, you will get a probability distribution. Does this statement make sense now, right, okay. So, then during training, our objective should be to maximize or rather uh, maximize the like log, uh, likelihood L theta, where theta are the parameters of the model, right and maximizing the likelihood we have already seen, right. So, this is, we want to make sure that during training, if my training sample was my actual training sample was I am going home today, right. If that was my actual sample, then when I pass it this, P of I should be maximized, right. That is what maximizing the likelihood means. When I take the I and pass it here, the P of am should be maximized, right. Or rather P of am, uh, P of the second word equal to am given that the first word was I should be maximized. Does that make sense, right? So, this is what maximizing the likelihood means. So, that I have to adjust the parameters theta of the model so that this guy gets the maximum probability, right? And this is an iterative back propagation algorithm that we have seen before in the first course. So, the same back propagation algorithm will be used and you will keep adjusting the parameters theta till over a period of time your probabilities start aligning with what you actually want them to be. That means the predictions are correct. Does that make sense, right? the correct word gets the uh, maximum probability. These are all uh, things that we have seen uh, in the previous course of how to maximize uh, objective function.